very excited, uh, especially when it's under Dave Filoni's tutelage. He's shown back in Rebels. He understands Thrawn, understands how to write for him, understands how you defeat him. Um, you, you give him something he can't control or something he doesn't know. Um, I would always be nervous about whether the writers bring him in would understand him enough to write properly. Filoni seems to have got it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he's doing. I know a little bit of some of the new characters, some of the new dynamic. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. I would like to do that. That's that's the it's a big nine year gap that I am aching to write novels in. Uh, so far, I've not been approached. So far, uh, not been offered that. Um, and I don't know how much Dave wants to fill in of that on his own. On the other hand, no matter how tightly he fills in that nine years, I know I can find good stories to tell in that. So what, whether he's got just vague ideas, whether he's got a month by month sort of thing, I will still be able to do good stories in it once they let me. But yeah, I, I am just champing it to get that, get to that someday. Yeah, you've been chopping for a while because pre-pandemic Dragon Con, you were talking about wanting to tell yeah. that story. Yeah. So, um, to, 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 I want to just touch on one character in the book. Um, I adore Commander Keemand. Mm. Uh, Thrawn Alliances is my favorite workplace comedy with villains. And okay. I'm not sure if you meant to write a comedy, but it's my favorite Thrawn book. It's my favorite Star Wars book. And I just adore... Oh, you kind of just let the villains just kind of go on an absurd side adventure where bugs stick to Vader and he gets stuck to the floor and Thrawn and Anakin are trying to alpha male each other. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always tricky when you've got, how do you make something that you can, that the villain can't defeat, especially when it's something like Vader. Okay, he's got the force. He's got a lightsaber. What can you do? can't anticipate and will have trouble with. And that was the attack bugs that splatter into a quick-drying, cement-like, rock-like thing. You just encase your opponent in that. Too many for you to push all of them away with the force. Lightsaber won't do any good against a swarm of something. So that was a, okay, how do I come up with something that can stop even Vader? And then later in the book, how do I get Vader to counteract that? So that is, that's always the challenge with a, a strong villain, find something that, fight, that he has to rise to the challenge. And that was my answer to that. It, it does sort of sound comedic, but if you were the one being turned into a, you know, a statue, it wouldn't be as funny. Oh, yeah. But there are certain scenes in that, like with Keeman and Rook, that are sh almost straight from Monty Python, and I wasn't <laughs> sure if that was intentional. It was not intentional, but it was more of a... Keeman, for those who haven't read it, is the head of um, Vader's security, first, first Legion uh, security detail in this book. And he takes his position, his job, very seriously, and part of that is protect Vader, or that's to protect Vader, to do what Vader wants uh, his, the stormtroopers to do. And Rook, whose job is to protect Thrawn and his interests, they butt heads periodically and have this, okay, I can sneak aboard your ship. No, I'm not going to let you sneak aboard our ship. It was not intended to be comedic, but there are certain comedic aspects that just naturally come about. Oh, yeah. But and since they are both very good warriors... They wind up working together when when push comes to shove. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, there there are humorous aspects to it, and there, then there's Commodore Farrow, who's kind of in charge of this circus, who is having to walk the line between my commander is my admiral is Thrawn. However, you don't say no to Vader without a good reason, and I've got politics dealing with some of the officers on my ship because they're well connected and having to. And also, I'm supposed to fly this ship and bring it into combat when necessary. So uh, it, it's it's a mix. There's a lot of dynamic to it. There There is humor with it because Star Wars, part of the Star Wars mix is humor. Uh, adventure, loyalty, sacrifice, friendship, but also there's humor in it. And uh, that's the mix I came up with.
And that's probably like what I enjoy most about it is because I I think a lot of people are afraid to make the villains funny. Mm-hmm. And that's what I really loved about that story. And I might be the only Commander Keeman fangirl in the world, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, Anybody, it, it's fine to be funny as long as when it's time to do your job, you're really good at it. Mm-hmm. And he is. Oh, yeah. That was, yes, I wanted to bring this in the Ascendancy trilogy. There is obviously focusing on the Chiss, but I wanted, we had done the memories part in the first two. And for the third one, I wanted Throst, uh, Thrawn's sort of at this point adoptive sort of brother, to be the point of view character that. And uh, I pitched it to the editor, and he was okay, okay, let's go ahead and try that. When he read the first memories with Roth, he wrote back and said, yes, this is perfect. This is exactly the person POV for that. So it's interesting. Outbound Flight is still a legend book, but the Chiss sections are canon because they're in Ascendancy, which is canon. So uh, it it becomes a a strange hybrid. Some of the elements of the Thrawn trilogy possibly will become canon depending on what Baloney does with Ahsoka. Uh, so we, I've got some of these foot over the, the, over the line thing. But just to mention, remember that legends are the stories of King Arthur and Robin Hood and, and Paul Bunyan. Uh, they're the stories you tell around the campfire. And just because those stories, those books are now legends, doesn't mean they're still not enjoyable. People enjoy it, like reading them. They're good stories. And, uh, you know, people went into a big panic when that was first announced. But no, don't panic. The, the books are still good. You still enjoy them. Tell them around the campfire while you're eating your s'mores. And uh, it, this is all good. was uh he had a lot of people had liked him in outbound flight but we didn't i mean that's not the focus of the books we didn't get a lot of that we did not get a lot of his interaction with theron being able to build all that in uh, into the memory section lesser evil was very satisfying it was it, to the point where the last scene which has to echo the ending of Outbound Flight was a wrench to write, and people people told me, I hoped it would be different. No, it can't be. This is the way it works. But yeah, it was it was uh, enjoyable to bring him back and build that, that relation. The moment we're having trouble getting Story Group, my editor, and me into the same time slot where we can discuss new books. Obviously, Story Group is up to their eyeballs in other vetting material and everything. And uh, the editor is working a lot with the High Republic stuff or for Star Wars, and I've got other projects and conventions and things. But one, yeah, definitely I'd like to do more Chiss. Uh, one of my thoughts was be, until... I can write more of Thrawn in that nine-year gap. Do what I call, I've got pitches the Donut Thrawn, a Thrawn book with no Thrawn in it, which would be Arlani, Eli Vanto, probably Commodore Pharaoh, uh, possibly going out into the Indian regions. And the, the hook on that one was they run into the Navy of Snoke and destroy it. Which is why in the sequels he has to go to the First Order and recruit them. We've already destroyed his his planned attack. Uh, so far, I have not gotten traction on that. But uh, when I get a chance to pitch things, I will hopefully be able to pitch that one. You told me a, an era, and I could probably write a good, a fun story. Um, nothing is better or worse, I don't think. I like the classic era, which is the Imperial era, but I can do, go back and do uh, Sith Jedi, the, the 
Sith Jedi conflicts and such in the in the Old Republic and that era. Um, one of the thoughts I would also like to pitch is in the Ascendancy trilogy, we talk about the Dark Flash, Sky Flash, whatever the weapon is, that one use weapon, and the story of how they got uh, how they got it, and that that battle where the the uh, the Chiss Patriarch lost her two her two or three sons. Uh, again, lots of lots of Chiss stuff, lots of um, long history of Star Wars in the galaxy that could have stories written about them. So uh, when they offer me one or when we get to talk, I will pitch them my ideas. They can tell me what they would like me to do, and we will find something I can do and enjoy. I believe we are out of time, so thank you so much, Timothy. No problem. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And have a good con. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>